Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on how to launch your career with an apprenticeship, brought to you by Fish for Jobs in partnership with Learn Direct. Um, before we get started, I just want to check everyone um, is logged in okay, can, uh, can see the screen and can hear me. If you're having any um, technical issues, there is a red button underneath the slides, um, live technical support, so just click on that and they'll be able to help you. Okay, great stuff. So a bit about this webinar before we kick off. It's going to be about 50 minutes long. The first half is going to be a presentation for myself and Hannah, and then we're going to move over to a live Q&A. Um, if you haven't already, please do post a question using the post a question tab um, beneath the screen, and we will try to come, um, answer as many questions as we can. If we don't manage to answer your questions, fear not, we will come back to you by email. So the presentation is going to cover why you should choose an apprenticeship, uh, what sorts of things employers look for in apprentices, how to find an apprenticeship vacancy, how to complete an apprenticeship application form, um, how to prepare for telephone and face-to-face -face interviews, then a bit about social media do's and don'ts, and then just finally, please do interact and post questions using the Ask a Question tab. Okay, so now I'm going to hand over to LearnDirect's Hannah, who's going to tell you a little bit more about apprenticeships. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. So there are many myths about apprenticeships, about what they involve and who they are for. For example, lots of people think apprenticeships are poorly paid, but employers have to pay you a national minimum wage, and often employers will pay you above this. And wages will vary according to the job role that you're doing. And what many employers do is start you on one wage, and as your experience and skills increase throughout the duration of the apprenticeship, the pay will then also increase with that. Lots of people also think that apprenticeships are for trade jobs only, but this isn't the case. Apprenticeships are available in all industries, such as health and social care, hospitality, IT and many more. So whatever you want to do, an apprenticeship could be a perfect starting point for you. People also say to me that apprenticeships are for people who didn't do well at school, but this isn't the case. If you're ambitious and want to go to uni, an apprenticeship is an acceptable route, and it also looks great on your UCAS application. Here at LearnDirect, we offer a whole range of apprenticeship opportunities, from business administration, which would involve working in an office-based environment, to hospitality, which may involve working in a busy kitchen, preparing and cooking food. We also offer childcare and dental nursing apprenticeships, so very specific qualifications that train you to work in that industry. And in addition to this, we offer customer service, finance, IT and retail, a vast range that suits a variety of job roles and employers. And we also offer these apprenticeships at different levels. The level two is an equivalent to five grade C's at GCSE, and that's generally where most apprentices start. We also offer a level three qualification, which is equivalent to two A levels. And what we generally find is people start on the level two, and then as they develop, they then progress to the level three qualification. Again, this looks great on a UCAS application form. So why choose an apprenticeship? For one, it's a great way into lots of careers. It gives you a minimum of one year's work experience which employers love to see. It also enables you to develop lots of really useful skills that you can use in the future and in future job roles. You'll also be getting paid as well as gaining a qualification. And in addition to this, you'll still be eligible for all the student perks, such as an MUS card, giving you discounts in lots of shops and leisure activities. You can see a copy of Lundirect Course Guide at the bottom on the resource tab. So take a look and have a look at all the great courses we have on offer. So why choose LearnDirect? So LearnDirect is one of the largest providers in the UK and we work with large and small employers. So we work with large employers like Poundland and British Gas, but we also work with lots of small local businesses as well. We also run apprenticeships all year round so you can start at a time convenient for you. And we're also based around the UK, so whether you live in Manchester, whether you live in Cornwall, we can support you in finding an apprenticeship. 
So it can be difficult to get that first job, particularly if you don't have much work experience. Employers will take that into account, but there are a few things you can do to really wow an employer. Be confident in yourself. Be polite to all members of the team. Go in with a smart appearance. Be clear on what you want to say when you're at work and work well with your team members. This will create a really great impression and show the employer how enthusiastic and eager you are. So there are many ways to find an apprenticeship. The main way is to look on the apprenticeship website. All vacancies are advertised on there. You will need to start by creating an account and once you've done this, you can search for vacancies in your area of where you live and also by sector. So for example, you can do a search for all childcare vacancies within the Manchester area and all the live vacancies will come up ready for you to apply for. You can also work directly with a training provider to see what positions they have on offer. And there are also a number of useful organisations such as Not Going to Uni and the Fish for Jobs website, which will advertise all vacancy, apprenticeship vacancies. So once you find an apprenticeship you're interested in, the next step is to apply. And completing application forms can be really difficult, but we're here to support you and give you tips on how best to complete them. So the advice I would say is to check your spelling and grammar throughout the application. Make sure your contact details are correct and make sure you answer questions in full and in detail, really explaining why you want to work in that industry and why you are the best person for that job. Don't be afraid to sell yourself. This is your chance to stand out. A CV advice guide can be downloaded by clicking on the resources tab below and this will support you in creating a really great CV. After submitting your application form, you may be required to do a telephone interview. Now these are just as important as face-to-face -face interviews, so preparation is really important. So first, make sure you're in a quiet room with no distraction or background noise, and this will really help you to concentrate on what's being asked. Have the job details to hand so you can refer to this throughout the interview. And prepare for questions that you may get asked. And also prepare for questions that you may like to ask the employer. This shows that you've really researched the job well and that you're eager to know more. And don't forget, take notes throughout. This will help you to decide whether this is the right apprenticeship for you. So interviews can be really scary, but preparing in advance can really help the interview go smoothly. The first thing that I would suggest is to prepare your route in advance so you know exactly where you're going, how long it would take to get there. And always arrive on time, and I suggest arriving 10 minutes early. This will give you time to compose yourself before the interview starts. It's really important to know a little bit about the company. So have a look on their website beforehand so you have an idea of what they do. And also make sure you're fully aware of what the job role involves. Read through the job description again. And any questions that you have, highlight them ready to ask the employer. Another useful thing is to understand what the apprenticeship will involve, how long it will last, and whether you have to have a day release to college. And just like the telephone interview, prepare questions that they may ask you, and again, questions that you'd like to ask them. Mistakes during interviews can sometimes occur, and common mistakes can include walking in unprepared, not knowing what the job involves or what the company do. This will make you feel a little bit embarrassed and maybe unconfident, so preparation is key to a successful interview. Also, dress appropriately. Smart trousers and a shirt always creates a great first impression. And remember, it's normal to be nervous, and employers will understand this. But holding your head up high and smiling will go a long way. At the bottom, again, is a guide on common mistakes in interviews. Have a look through it. It's a really useful document. I will now pass you back over to Charlotte, who will talk through frequently asked questions during an interview. Great. Thanks, Hannah. Um, so, yeah, we pulled together a list 
of basically five questions that we reckon you're going to get asked in interviews in some shape or form. <laughs> they might not be exactly as we put them on screen, but it's the first one, and I actually think this is probably the hardest interview question, which is the sort of tell me about yourself. Um, it's really hard because there is this uh, potential for you to start sort of rambling and, and go back to, you know, I was born in 1985 <laughs> type thing. But also it comes, normally comes at the beginning of the interview when you're really nervous and you haven't warmed up. So this would be one question I'd really recommend that you, you prepare in advance and practice sort of three or four times. And really we're talking about a couple of paragraphs here. Um, they, they're really mainly interested in relevant uh, kind of work experience or studies. So think about the job you're applying for and, and try to pull out kind of the most relevant bits about you and also about your situation. So maybe you've just left school or, or uni or whatever your situation is. Um, next one, why should we hire you? Again, they might not ask you that directly, but they're, you know, that's at the back of their mind. Why should they pick you over the next person? Um, to make sure you prepare that one. Um, what are your weaknesses? Uh, I, I, you know, part of me can't believe that people are still asking that question in interviews, but um, research that we've done shows that they are. Um, as always, you know, it's something that's not, try to come up with something that's not really that bad. So it might be, for example, you know, I'm not that great at prioritizing, but I, I'm aware of this. I've taken steps to address this through X and Y. Um, why do you want this job? Again, they might not ask you that directly, but they might ask you something like, you know, what appealed to you about this job? Um, if they don't ask you this question, make sure you tell them that you really want the job and why. Um, you know, enthusiasm and positivity and, and making the employer really believe you want to work for their company and that job goes a long way. And then last one is give me an example when you – it's a bit of a trick question because we, we can't predict what they're going to ask you here. But they're normally going to ask you for examples that relate to the job you're applying for. So look through the description and try to pick out things that you think they might ask you and try to survey, you know, something required for the job, um, you know, good time management skills or project management or something like that. Try to think of an example either – from your studies or maybe some extracurricular activity or hobby which can uh, back up um, why you, you know you have that skill or why you'd be the right person to the job um, and we've got a resource for you here on common interview questions which which goes through these and gives you a bit more detail so have a look at that um, top interview turnoffs so we did a bit of research recently with some recruiters and employers and these are the things that came out as a top interview turnoff from some quite surprising ones there. Um, but in, uh, in the list, we've got limp handshakes. So make sure you have a nice firm handshake. You don't want to take the hand off, but, you know, nice and firm, positive, look them in the eye. Um, chewing gum. This, uh, I actually interviewed someone recently who did chew gum throughout the interview, and it's really off-putting. So I remember to remove your chewing gum. Um, <laughs> ignoring the dress code. I know it, it can be tricky, especially if you're going for a job that maybe is not... Um, an office-based job, um, but if in doubt, just play it safe. You know, a smart uh, suit is always a good idea. Um, work, hi work history issues. So this is stuff like gaps um, in your CVs or perhaps sort of um, being negative about a previous employer. So, you know, really avoid that. Um, poor presentation. So here we're talking about not just your clothing, but your posture, your grooming. So, so again, and this uh, kind of ties into later when we talk about poor body language. This, this is really easy to fix. This is the easiest thing to fix in an interview. So um, it's always worth doing a, like a mock interview, a practice interview, either with members of your family or friends or someone who's not going to make you laugh. And, and they'll tell you stuff that you probably don't even know, like maybe you fidget or maybe you're a bit slouched. Um, so definitely advise doing that before the big day. Um, see these spelling mistakes are by far the biggest criticism um, when it comes to CVs and put in application forms as well. There's, uh, spelling mistakes, again, really easy to fix, but we often can't see our own mistakes, so get someone else to cast their eyes over it first to make sure it is mistake-free. Um, next on the list, I couldn't quite believe this one, but answering your mobile phone. <laughs> wow. So I, I can understand maybe for going to put it on silent or switch it off, but really don't answer your mobile phone during an interview. Um, we've covered off poor body language. Uh, next on the list was unusual comments. Um, I guess it's, uh, it's quite broad, but you just remember to stay sort of upbeat and positive and professional um, during your interview. 
rude behaviour that also came on the list. Um, I've never experienced that myself, but yeah, again, positive, polite, friendly, and arriving late. This is one of my number one pet hates for people turning up for interviews. It it just puts you on such a a bad start if you do this. So really make sure, don't turn up too too early because otherwise you're going to be sitting in a reception area for ages getting all nervous. But, you know, definitely 15 minutes early. And also make sure when you're in the reception area, all eyes are on you while you're waiting there. So again, good posture. Um, don't, you know, don't sit on your mobile phone. Just try to look interested in if there's some company literature or whatever on the table. Have a flick through that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a bit about how you can use social media to your advantage, so LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook mainly. Um, but before we, you can start doing this, you need to make sure that your social media presence isn't putting you at a disadvantage. So um, I call this sort of clean up your act. <laughs> um, approximately 80% of employers will Google candidates either before they interview them or hire them. So... I really recommend Googling yourself, putting your name in, and, and seeing what comes up in the search results. And does this position you as an ideal potential employee? If there's stuff on there that you don't want your employer to see, and this goes the same when you're in a job, make sure you make it private, delete it, or do whatever you need to do um, to keep that out of their eyes. And make sure you also keep good company. So who's tagging you in photos that you might not want your employer to see? You know, who... You know, make sure they're not putting you at a disadvantage. Um, using professional names, especially your email address. You might want to create an email address just for when you're applying for an apprenticeship or a job. And that's quite good, actually, having a different email account because that means all the, your work activity comes into their wallet and address. And then once you've cleaned everything up, a really good idea is to set up Google Alerts to monitor. So Google Alerts, they're emails that get sent. Every time your name gets mentioned online, you get sent an email with a link to where you've been mentioned. Um, so a bit more about this in the resources below. It's called Using Social Media in Your Job Search. So once you've cleaned everything up, how do you use social media to your advantage? Um, so really, there's kind of four main things we're going to cover here. It's um, LinkedIn, um, probably something you'll use as you get more developed through your career. Um, but a really good tool to get connected, to get connected to potential recruiters and employers. Um, also get recommendations. I know if you're really early on in your career, you might think, oh, who's going to recommend me? Um, family, friends, someone you have some work experience with, perhaps, um, that kind of thing. Then you might be looking to get into an industry where perhaps having a blog or an online platform will really put you in an advantage. So if you're going into creative industry, you might want to show um, examples of your writing or examples of um, your designs or something like that. So that, you know, depending on the industry you're going into, but that's also a good idea. And then finally, Twitter. How do you put that to work for you? Well, obviously, you can sort of search using maybe hashtag jobs, search for jobs. You can follow companies you'd like to work for. Um, but it's also a really great way of finding out. So if you're going to an interview with a company, you might want to see what they're doing on Twitter, what they're putting out, so find out a bit more about them. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the live Q&A with Hannah. Um, as I said, if you haven't already, do post questions and any that we don't manage to get um, to answer today, we'll come back to you by email. Okay, thanks, Hannah. Okay, thank you so much, Charlotte. So we've got lots of questions that have come in, um, so thank you, everyone. There's been quite a few, so we may not be able to answer all of them, but we will try our best to. Um, I have my colleague, Katie, with me, so she will also support me in answering the questions. Um, okay, so the first question, then, we've had from Alison, Chris, and John, so it's a similar question from the three of you, and that's the right, is there an age limit on apprenticeship? There, is, there isn't an age limit, which is great to know, so you can do an apprenticeship at any age. However, not all apprenticeships are fully funded. But if you're 16 to 18 years old, then you can definitely get an apprenticeship um, funded, which means you don't have to pay anything. However, if you're 19 plus, there may be a fee, depending on what training provider you go with. So thank you for that question. We've had a question in from James on what is the difference between an apprenticeship and an internship. So an internship tends to be something that you arrange yourself with an employer. Um, it's work experience, and it can range from anything from one week to a couple of months, depending on what that arrangement is. An internship is just work experience. 
Um, so it's really great. You're getting lots of experience with that employer. However, an apprenticeship, you'll not only get that work experience, but you'll be getting paid whilst you're working, and you'll also be earning a, gaining a qualification at the same time. So that's the main difference between the two. The hourly wage for an apprentice, so this question came in from Wendy. So the hourly rate is £2.73, so that's what the current pay is, the minimum wage. Now, most employers do tend to pay more than this, so this is just the minimum wage. Also, um, the wage is due to increase in October, and this will rise to £3.30. But I hope that's answered your question, Wendy. We at Learn Direct offer a range of apprenticeships. So we've had some questions come in. Um, we've had one question regarding an IT apprenticeship. And we do have lots of IT apprenticeships around the country with lots of different companies. So just look on the website, the apprenticeship website, or the Learn Direct website, and you'll see all the vacancies advertised there. Stephen's asked what happens if he applies for an apprenticeship. So what will happen? You apply generally on the National Apprenticeship website. That's the main route where all vacancies are advertised. Once you apply, within a 48 to 72 hour period, Learn Direct will contact you regarding that apprenticeship. And what we tend to do is carry out a 20 minute telephone interview with all candidates that apply. And this just gives us the chance to make sure an apprenticeship is the right thing for you to do and also for you to make sure that it's the right route for you to do. So I hope that's answered your question, Stephen. Leo has asked what government funding means. So apprenticeships are government funded. Now this means that you don't have to pay anything towards the qualification or the apprenticeship. However, as I previously mentioned, this only applies to 16 to 18 year olds. So 16 to 18 year olds, you'll definitely get your qualification funded by the government. However, as previously mentioned, if you're 19 plus, there may be a fee involved. Um, so that's just something you need to discuss with the training provider who's advertising that vacancy. Mike has asked if apprenticeships are available to those in Scotland. So, Mike, they are available, but they're known as modern apprenticeships in Scotland. So that's what they'll be advertised under. Now, apprenticeships, um, they are delivered in many different ways. And we've had quite a few questions regarding whether you have to go to college once you're doing your apprenticeship. So, Kit, to answer your question... It depends on the training provider. Some providers will want you to go to college for one day a week. Other providers may want you to go to college for one day a month. So it really does just depend on the qualification and the provider that you're working with um, as to whether you go to college or not. If you don't go to college, then that means all the training will be done on the job whilst you're working. We've had quite a few questions come in regarding um, people going in starting a new career that they've not worked in before. So Alan has asked, whether he can do an apprentice in the hospitality industry, even though he has no experience. And that's absolutely fine. And I think the great thing about an apprenticeship is that you can do, do an apprenticeship, even if you have no experience. The key thing that we're looking for is enthusiasm to work in that industry and a real passion to work in that industry. So, Alan, if you're looking to work in hospitality, and even though you have no experience, that's absolutely fine. If you're eager, you're enthusiastic to work there, then I'm sure that will get you a successful apprenticeship. So a typical length of apprenticeship... Um, Generally, the minimum length is a 12 months, so all apprenticeships are a minimum of 12 months. And then depending on the type of qualification, the type of apprenticeship you're doing, and the level, then the length will vary. So, Robert, you've asked what is the typical length of a finance apprenticeship, and that can range from anything between 12 months to 24 months. So it's generally between a one- and two-year programme. Rachel has asked, will I definitely get a full-time job after my apprenticeship completes? So just something for you to be aware of, when you start your apprenticeship, you will not necessarily definitely get a job at the end with that employer. Um, but of course, they've trained you up, the person that they want you to be, you'll be a fully trained member of staff, so they're more than likely to keep you on. And we've got some statistics that show 60% of apprentices actually stay with the same employer that they've done their apprenticeship with, and 90% actually move on to do a similar job role but with a different employer. So I think, you know, they're really high stats. Um, just to show how successful doing an apprenticeship is, and you're pretty much going to get a job at the end of it. So Jackie, Jackie has asked about assessment methods. Jackie's asked, when the apprenticeship finishes, how and who assess the progress I've made? So, so Jackie, with Learn Direct, we assess you monthly. So what that means is we will visit you in the, in the workplace once a month, and that will be at a time that's convenient for you and the employer. And when we come out, we'll assess you in the job. And what that means is we will observe you working to make sure that you're doing the job role as you should be. We'll ask you questions to make sure you understand how you're doing the job role. 
We'll speak to your manager for feedback on your performance. So it's a whole range of assessment methods done in the workplace to make sure you're doing the job and you feel comfortable that you're learning on the job. At the end of the apprenticeship, all that evidence that we've gained from you will then be given to a quality assurer from Learn Direct who will then assess it and make sure that you meet the standards. But of course, we've assessed this throughout, so it's absolutely, you know, if there's any problems throughout the duration, we would identify those early on and put measures in place to make sure you stay on, on track with your apprenticeship. So there are different levels for an apprenticeship. Harvey's asked, what are the different levels? So, Harvey, we do two main types of apprenticeships. The level two, which is an intermediate, and that's generally what all apprentices start on. It's a really great starting point. So the level two is equivalent to five grade C's of GCSE. Um, and then we also do the level three apprenticeship. So the level three is equivalent to two A levels, and that's also known as a, an advanced apprenticeship. What usually happens is people start on the level two and do the, the duration of that program, which is generally one year, and then move on to the level three, which is generally another additional year. So Pam has asked, why is an apprenticeship so good? And I think, you know, this is a really great question. Apprenticeships are really good. Not only do they give you one year's work experience, which looks great on your CV, employers love to see that you've worked in that industry, it shows that you've got commitment to that industry, and it shows you're committed in the workplace. But not only that, it gives you a qualification. So at the end of that apprenticeship, you can have a qualification within that industry, which again looks great on your CV. And an extra bonus, you're getting paid while you're learning. So not only are you gaining that qualification, not only are you gaining work experience, but you're earning a wage as well, which is really useful and really helpful for you. So will an apprenticeship be well regarded by future employers? And yes, they definitely are highly regarded. Um, I think, you know, the whole aspect of them having, you know, having that work experience, employers love to see that. It shows that you have committed. It shows that you're, you know, you turn up for work every day. Um, it shows that you're dedicated to something. And that in itself is brilliant and what employers really love to see. Also, it shows that you've got a bit of experience already in that industry. So, again, that's going to go in your favour. They're going to see that you've got experience. They're not training you up from scratch. You're going to come in with useful skills and really support them in their business from day one. So definitely apprenticeships are well regarded with employers. So there's been a few similar questions from John and Tam regarding employee benefits. So as an apprentice, you are an employee, which means you do get the same benefits as non-apprentices, and it also means that you do get holiday pay. So with the holiday pay, you'll get a minimum of 20 days per year holiday, and in addition to that, you also get the bank holidays. So 28 days holiday paid whilst you're an apprentice, which is really great. David has asked, does the employer pay my commuting costs? David, this actually depends on the employer. And it's something that we definitely, as Learn Direct, will encourage employers to support you with that. However, it's generally down to the employer to make that decision. And it's something that you can discuss during interview. Or, or when you've been offered the job, you can then discuss whether that's something they may be able to support you with. Something useful to bear in mind is, as an apprentice, you will get a student card, an NUS card, which does offer you discounts on travel. So that's also a benefit. Okay, so Lee's asked about the wage. So Lee, as mentioned previously, the minimum wage is £2.73, but that is going to go up in October to £3.30. And that was um, recently released. I think it was released this week. So that's really great to see that the government has put that national minimum wage up. And as I previously, previously said, um, often employers will pay you more than the minimum wage as well. So Gary has, has asked, can he do an apprenticeship if he has a degree? Gary, you can do an apprenticeship if you have a degree. However, it won't be funded. So that means you would have to pay for the apprenticeship yourself. So that's something you'll need to discuss with, your, with the provider as to how much that will actually cost. So the minimum hours for an apprenticeship, um, this question has come in from Stephen. Stephen, the minimum hours is 30 hours per week, and the maximum hours is around 40 hours per week. So we believe, you know, working between 30 and 40 hours gives you a real idea of what it's like to work in that industry full time. Um, it gives you that real experience that you need so you know what it's truly like to work as a full time member of staff. So I hope that answers your question. So Reggie has asked, when can I start an apprenticeship? So, Reggie, apprenticeships um, with Learn Direct can start at any time of the year. So we can work at a time that's convenient for you. 
this obviously depends on provider. So some providers only have set intakes. So some providers may just take you on at certain times of the year, maybe September time. But Lund Direct, we can take you on at any time of the year. That's convenient. So a question has come in from Mike on what are the entry requirements for an apprentice. So, Mike, the entry requirements very much depend on the qualification and the apprentice that you want, apprenticeship you want to do. And it also depends on the employer's requirements. So some employers are quite, um, some employers say that they want you to have certain qualifications before starting the apprenticeship programme, whereas other employers are very much more relaxed about that. So that will depend. And when you, when you see the adverts um, and when you apply for your vacancies, you will be able to see what their requirements are. At Learn Direct, we work with some really big companies that offer apprenticeships programmes. So we currently work quite closely with British Gas. So they have, um, they take on a cohort of apprentices each year, um, and they've currently just taken on 10 apprentices who are working towards a customer service qualification. We also do apprenticeships with Lloyds Bank, um, and that's generally the financial services qualification. We also work with other big employers like Pangland, who generally focus on retail or customer service, and also the co-op group. So some really great um, employers there that support with the apprenticeship program. So we've had quite a few questions in regarding interviews. Um, Tim has asked, well, Tim has said that during the interview, he tends to get quite nervous and quite stuck at what kind of questions to ask the employer. What I would suggest here, Tim, is to really research that job before you go for your interview. Make sure that you fully understand what the job role involves. And anything that you don't understand, then that's the time at the interview that you can ask the employer to explain further. It's also great to ask questions to the employer about the actual working environment, so to find out what kind of office you'll be working in, what kind of people work in the industry or in that business, just so you get a real feel for what it's going to be like to work for that employer. So I think preparation there is really important, Tim. Just preparing these kind of questions in advance will really help you at that interview. Raj has also asked um, and has said that during the interview stage, um, they get very nervous, and are there any tips to stay calm? So I would say here, Raj, the, the main thing is to prepare in advance. So prepare right, right from the start, you know, prepare your route to the interview. Make sure you know where you're going. So when you get there, you're nice and calm. You haven't had to rush around. Always arrive, you know, 10 minutes early, just so you've got some time to compose yourself before you actually meet the interviewer. And then it's really important to practice some interview questions. So prepare some questions that you feel may come up in your interview. And the resources at the bottom of this um, webinar, actually, that we've included, they will really help you to, to identify the type of questions that the employer may ask you, so you can prepare for some questions in advance of the interview. So preparation is key. It really will help you have a mood running interview. So Sasha has asked, can I apply for more than one apprenticeship at a time? And yes, Sasha, you can apply for up to 10 apprenticeships at any one time, um, and that's all through the National Apprenticeship website. We've had a similar question um, from Ellie. So Ellie has recently completed an apprenticeship in catering, but now wants to move to a finance apprenticeship. So Ellie, just to answer your, your question, yes, that's absolutely fine. If you've done a catering apprenticeship and you think, oh, actually, I'm not too sure if this is the right apprenticeship for me, then that's absolutely fine for you to apply for other apprenticeships in different industries if that's what you want to do. So Naomi has asked, um, after finishing, finishing my apprenticeship, what can I do next? So, Naomi, a great next step is to progress to the next level of apprenticeship. So, if you started on a level two, which most apprentices do, then the next step would be to progress to that level three apprenticeship. The level three, um, like I said before, is, a, is equivalent to two A levels. So it's a really nice high standard, and it really helps you in the workplace to progress and develop. So, that would be the next step that I would recommend for you. So Daniel has asked, um, when should he start applying for apprenticeship? So Daniel is still at school. Um, he's 16. He finishes school in July. So Daniel, if you're interested in apprenticeships, I would say the best time to start looking is in May time. Generally, apprenticeships that are on offer at the moment, that are currently being advertised, are for immediate starts. So if you start applying now, you may get rejected because you're not available. So I would say apply in May, and that would be perfect timing um, for you to start in July. So Alberto has asked, can I apply for apprenticeships through school? So Alberto, I would say the best way to apply for an apprenticeship is through the National Apprenticeship website. That's where all apprenticeship vacancies are advertised with all providers. So you're going to get to see all those live vacancies in your area. Um, so that's the best route. Um, to apply on the apprenticeship website, you need to start by creating an, an account. Um, this takes about 10 minutes to do. And then once you've um, created that account, you can start applying for as many vacancies as you want to. 
So Davina has asked, are there apprenticeships for office work like admin and HR? And Davina, there absolutely are. Um, here at Learn Direct, we offer lots and lots of business admin apprenticeships, and we offer them in lots of different sectors. So it may be that you work in a clothes shop, but work in the office upstairs doing the paperwork side. It may be that you work in a busy office in the centre. Um, business admin is a huge apprenticeship. It's got lots of different routes that you can go down and it's definitely one we've always got lots of apprenticeship vacancies in business admin so again have a look on the website that's where they'll all be advertised so jordan has asked um i'm applying for a variety of jobs and apprenticeships should i have different cvs for each and yes jordan i would say definitely you need to tailor your cv to the job board that you're applying for so in your personal profile if you're applying for a job in childcare, you need to make sure your personal profile is is linked to childcare. Um, and if you go the next day and apply for a job in retail, you know, they're not going to be interested in, in knowing that you're looking for a job in childcare. So you need to really amend that personal profile to make sure it's relevant to that job board you're applying for. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the questions now. So thank you all so much. There have been quite a few and we haven't had time to cover them all. Um, what I can say is at the end, we will try to uh, reply to everybody via email. Um, in addition to that, this webinar will be available after. So it will be available on the Fish for Jobs website and also on the Learn Direct website. Um, and that should be available from Monday. So if there's anything you're, you missed or anything that you want to hear again, then please look on those websites and, and you'll see the webinar on there ready to listen to. So we have got a number of resources available for you to download, and that can be found in the resource tab below. So these useful documents include a CV template. So really important to have a great CV for the employer to, to see who you are and what you've previously done. We've also got a CV advice guide. So again, this will give you some tips on how to write a really good CV. Some of you mentioned about having difficult interview questions. So we've put some top interview questions that employers tend to ask you. So have a look at those. And like I said, prepare for them, prepare answers to those questions. We've also included some common interview mistakes. Um, so again, have a look at those to try and prevent those happening to you during an interview. And there's also some frequently asked interview questions as well on the bottom on the resource tab. So thank you for your time today. Um, please feel free, look at the Learn Direct and Fish for Jobs website for further support and good luck with your search for an apprenticeship.